Okay, in this video, we are going to look at PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. Now, I've covered this topic in my other videos, and you've seen me control a speed of a motor. So I could start off slow, and I could ramp up to maximum speed. So I have total control of the motor from stop to full speed using PWM. So what we do, we send pulses to the motor at a certain rate, and the wider the pulse, the more power to the load, and the narrower the pulse, the less power to the load. Now we send it at a certain frequency, so we'll have an on-time pulse width and an off-time pulse width in the, in the period of the frequency, and that will determine the duty cycle of the PWM. So by controlling the duty cycle, we can control any load from, from zero or from no power to maximum and anywhere in between. So we are going to look at a real-world PWM application. Now this will be an automotive application. So what you see here is a throttle body. Now this throttle body is off an of Audi A4 1.8 liter turbo engine. Now this throttle body con controls the amount of air that enters the engine, which basically controls the speed of the engine. So by opening up this butterfly valve, which you can see inside a throttle body, it will let more air into the engine. And I could send it a PWM signal and control the butterfly valve. So right now it would be idle. That would be an idle condition. And I could, I could open up the butterfly valve. So that would be half throttle. And I could bring up the full throttle. So I have total control of my throttle body and the speed of my engine by sending it a PWM signal, either 0% for idle and 100% for full throttle. And it's pretty responsive. So that's full throttle, and I'll bring it down to idle. i bring it back down. Now in the early days of carbureted engines, there was a linkage or a cable between the accelerator pedal and the carburetor. And in this case, there is no mechanical connection between the accelerator pedal and the throttle body. It's called drive-by wire. So a computer actually sends a PWM signal corresponding to how far you press down on the accelerator pedal to open up the throttle body to give your engine speed. Okay, in a drive-by wire system, there's a sensor in the accelerator pedal. That's basically a potentiometer, like we see here, which is configured as a voltage divider. So we feed 5 volts into the pot, and we'll get 0 to 5 volts out, depending on the position of the pedal. So in idle mode, with a foot off the pedal, we'll have 0 volts coming out of the potentiometer. And as we press down on the pedal, the volts will in increase, until we have wide open throttle, the, the pedal is pressed to the floor, we'll have 5 volts coming out of the potentiometer. Now this 0 to 5 volts is fed into the computer of, of the car, the ECU, and the computer will take that reading, the 0 to 5 volt reading, and give out a corresponding PWM to the throttle body. Now the throttle body will send back a feedback a voltage telling where the throttle butterfly valves are, so it's a closed loop. So as we press down on the pedal, we're giving a 0 to 5 volt input to the computer, the computer sends out a 0 to 100 percent PWM co corresponding to the 0 to 5 volts on our pedal, and the throttle body will send back a feedback voltage telling where the throttle body is, is positioned. So this is a closed loop system that's used in a drive-by wire system. So when we send a PWM signal to the throttle body, it's activating the motor, which is inside here, which correspondingly opens up the butterfly valve according to the PWM signal. Now as this valve opens, there's a feedback sensor in here, it's basically a potentiometer that sweeps back and forth, and it can detect the angle of the butterfly valve. So that you'll get a 0 to 5 volts from uh, idle to full throttle coming off this sensor, and that's being fed back into the computer. So if there's any errors detected by the computer, the, the system will go into a, a limp mode, and you'll get a check engine light uh, on your car. So this is the safety feature of a drive-by wire system. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of our throttle body and you can see it's fairly simple. So here's a motor and this is where we drive the PWM signal to open and close the butterfly valves. And here's a throttle position sensor feedback potentiometers. This gives back feedback data of the butterfly valves. You can see we're using two pots, two potentiometers, for, for redundancy reasons in case one fails. So we're feeding 5 volts across both pots, so we're going to get a 0 to 5 volts out of the wiper on each pot 
for the position data. Now these potentiometers are set up to run in opposite directions so as we're pressing on the gas pedal one of them will have a 0 to 5 volt output another one will have a 5 volt to 0 output so it will be running in opposite directions. So they do that so the voltage on both outputs will always add up to 5 volts and they use that to check the integrity of both potentiometers. Also they check the position data the angle of the butterfly valve to match the acceleration uh, pedal output data. So that's the feedback to back to the computer and all this is being checked and if there's anything wrong it puts the car into limp mode and gives a check engine light for safety reasons. Okay here's the schematic diagram of the pedal position sensor. Now this is what's inside your gas pedal. Now there's two potentiometers they use two pots for redundancy in case one fails and they're both configured to run in the same direction. Now the top one will get a 0 to 5 volts out from idle to wide open throttle and the bottom one will get 0 to 2.5 volts out from idle to wide open throttle. You can see there's an extra resistor here that cuts down the voltage to the voltage divider so we only get half the voltage out on the bottom signal. So both of these signals are fed into the computer and the computer could tell where the pedal position is and give the corresponding PWM signal to the throttle body. Okay here's the Audi service manual and we can see the diagram of the throttle body. So there's the motor and there's our two feedback potentiometers that are going back into the computer. Now here's a pedal position sensor and you can see the two potentiometers, the two feedback pots and one of them has the extra resistor there that cuts down the voltage to 2.5 volts for the output. And that also feeds back into, into, the, into the computer. So that's the diagrams there of the Audi service manual. Now to troubleshoot a drive-by wire system you need some special diagnostic tools, like the one here. This is the handheld VAG401 reader. It's got an OBD2 connector and you plug it into your car and you can read the throttle sensor data and the pedal position sensor data. Or you can get a laptop version and display it on your laptop. You can see here. And here you can see the two thr throttle sensor uh, data outputs and they're in percentage. And the first one is 16% and the second one is 83.6% and they're different because the two pots are configured to run in opposite directions but they both have to add up to 100 percent so 60 percent and 83.6 add up to 100 percent so we know the the sensor data is okay and on the pedal position sensor you can see one percentage is double the other because uh, we have that resistor that cuts down the voltage from 5 volts to 2.5 volts so the both readings will be half of the other so those two uh, readings look good but in my case I had to change out my throttle, uh, my throttle body because I was getting errors in my throttle position sensor. I had a dead spot in the feedback pot. So that's why I had to change out my throttle body. So these are some of the tools that you need to troubleshoot a drive-by wire system. Okay, now you know how a drive-by wire system works. And the purpose of this video was to show you a real PWM application. So I hope this video gave you some ideas how to come up with your own PWM projects.